It's time, it's time, Saucony Running Shoe Rotation 2020 in the studio. Oh man, here we go. We've got the Kinvara 11, the Triumph 18, the Ride 13, the Endorphin Shift, the Endorphin Speed, the Endorphin Pro. We got a lot of Saucony going on today in the studio. Now before we dive in, there's one vlog and one playlist upper right hand corner. The playlist is, yes, the collection of all the Saucony running shoe first impression vlogs and full review vlogs, okay? So if you're interested in diving deeper into the Saucony lineup, that's where you want to go for the drop, the midsole material, all of the price points, even though we are going to talk about those today, uh, talk about value and what, what Saucony shoe I think brings the most value to the, uh, to the rotation for 2020. And on that note of rotation, there is a vlog, upper right hand corner, I, it's, it's an old vlog actually now, I think six or seven months old. It's all about how to build out your running shoe rotation. And what do I mean by that? All right, let me set these down. What I mean by that is that in your training regimen, your training plan, you have different types of runs. You've got easy days, tempo days, long run days, fart lick days, interval days, all these different types of runs. And so my, one of my goals in the studio is to help you pair, all right, just like wine and cheese or socks and running shoes, but to pair your training runs with the correct running shoe, okay? And there's, um, so anyway, in the upper right hand corner of that vlog, I explain my, my system and my process of how I attempt my best in 2020 to pair. And now that's old, so I need to update it pretty soon. And I'll also say, if you do watch that vlog, don't feel overwhelmed about building out your running shoe rotation immediately and even in six months. Frankly, it could take a couple years to fully build out your rotation where you feel like, okay, this is my middle distance shoe. This is my interval day shoe. This is my threshold day shoe. And so just take your time. Oh yeah. Okay. And so also, uh, what is a tweener shoe? Who's a football fan out there? And frankly, probably any sport, probably hockey, lacrosse, basketball. A tweener is a term that is used, especially I've heard it in football, American football, where there's a player who's um, not quite the best as a safety and not quite the best as a cornerback, but uh, is, is good at both, okay? Maybe not exceptional at either one, but good at both. So that's a tweener in American football. It probably applies to all sports. So yes, in the running shoe rotation that I'm about to go through for Saucony, there are some shoes that are tweeners, meaning they can accomplish different tasks within the rotation. Um, and I think, frankly, can drive up the value of the shoe because the price is the same, but, but it can knock out all these different tasks within your training regimen. Does that make sense? Tweener. There it is on your screen. Does that even exist in the dictionary? Now let's dive in. We're going with the Kinvara 11 first. There it is up on the shelf. We got Kinvara 11, Ride 13, uh, Triumph 18. Uh, let's see. We'll jump down here to the Endorphin Shift, the Endorphin Speed, and the Endorphin Pro up here on the top. But first, the Kinvara 11 you're looking at, and I'm going to double check, but last I checked, it was $110. That's what I'm talking about, Saucony. And yes, I'm actually crazy. Going to put it into the tweener category. So I was pretty excited about the Kinvara, gosh, maybe five months ago, six months ago when I picked it up, and $110, a great price point. Let's see, so why is it a tweener shoe? 7.4 ounces. Also, a nice, nice uh, weight for a shoe that I think I liked the durometer scale. Now, it's got a little more stiff since it's been sitting out here in the studio, but I like the durometer scale. I put it into the easy day category, okay? So that running shoe rotation, what task will it, will it accomplish? Easy day, and because of that 7.4 ounce uh, weight class, I'm going to say you could also use it for a tempo day. I love that. Uh, now, would I take it out for a long run? I, I would not just because of the stack height, not quite enough stack height. And again, if you want all the details on the Kinvara 11 upper right hand corner, I really like this shoe. I thought it was a comfortable upper. Um, I like the gusseted tongue. And so I'm excited to see what they do with the Kinvara lineup in 2021. But Kinvara 11, $110. There you go. Next up, Ride 13. Okay, we're looking at $130. Now, 
the, the weight of the shoe did jump up quite a bit from the Convara 11. We're looking at 9.3 ounces, so basically two ounces more than the Convara 11. That is why I'm putting the Ride 13 into the easy day category. Could you use it for a long run? You could, absolutely. Uh, and uh, I would not use it though for a tempo day or threshold day shoe. Now, if you lose it for a, use it for a long run shoe, just keep in mind, you know, your legs might be a little more tired at the end of the run compared to some other shoe, uh, shoe options, options out there on the marketplace. Power run midsole, very plush upper, very comfortable shoe, okay? So there you go, Ride 13, $130 in 20. 20. Moving on up to the Triumph 18, and, and these I should have mentioned this at the beginning, the weights that I'm telling you are in my size, not in men's size 9, not in women's size 8, my size, okay? So here we go, Triumph 18. I'm not sure what to think about this shoe, a little perplexed by it. It did not make it to 50 miles, and frankly, I don't think it will, because here is the weight on your screen, oh my goodness, 10.5 ounces, coming in at $150. Hmm, hmm. And yes, it does have the new and updated Power Run Plus midsole. But here's the deal. Very stout, uh, very, very stout heel counter, okay? Very uh, durable, well-built, overly plush upper. Like, they didn't mess around at all. Not even the shoelaces. The shoelaces are even plush. So, that is a very, very heavy shoe. Very, a lot of rubber there, and I believe this is now blown rubber rather than crystal rubber. But just so you know the difference, uh, crystal rubber uh, has a longer lifespan compared to blown rubber. So I believe they switched from 2019 to blown rubber. I'm not sure why they did that. I'm a little surprised at how heavy it is. Easy day shoe for me. Uh, man, gosh, it's a good solid. And yes, I'll even just say, when I say easy day, could that fall into the daily trainer category as well? It could, but uh, uh, I don't, I, I'm frankly, I'm just a little, I'm a little surprised at how similar these shoes are actually, the Ride 13 or the Triumph 18. Now, the, the tri Triumph 18 does have a better midsole, a little more energy return. I was hoping for more energy return through that Power Run Plus midsole, but ugh, both of these shoes are sitting on the fence for me as far as would I buy them again. Now, moving on up into the Endorphin line. All the good old, these are these three shoes over here, all the white ones over on the shelf. So this is the Endorphin Shift. We're looking at $140, so more affordable than the Triumph 18. Fascinating. Coming in at 9.8 ounces in my size, $140. Um, now, some people are putting this into the stability shoe category. I am not, along with some other websites that I use for research. I don't think this is a stability shoe. It's border, borderline stability shoe. Um, it's a neutral shoe that has some, I would say, stability or motion control characteristics, including this heel counter here. Very stout uh, piece of plastic overlay to help uh, stabilize your heel and your ankle joint. Now, oh man, so I'm going to go... I actually thought that this midsole had more energy return than the absolutely more than the Power Run Plus in the Triumph 18. I'm going to go, it's tough, it's heavy. Nah, I wish it was like closer to nine ounces, but I'm going to go middle distance, uh, middle distance run shoes. So that let's say 12 to 15 mile run for my uh, training regimen. And yes, if you needed to take it up to a long run distance, you absolutely could. A little too heavy for tempo day and threshold, actually quite a bit uh, too heavy for a tempo day and threshold day. And, but I think the midsole has enough energy return to uh, not be an easy day shoe, okay? I think you could absolutely use this for middle distance runs. Now we're moving on up. Here we go, $160 for the Saucony Endorphin Speed. Not the Pro, the Speed. Does it have a carbon fiber plate in that midsole? No, it does not. Does it have a nylon plate? Yes, it does, all right? And I frankly, it's not as rigid or stiff as the, car, as the Endorphin Pro, okay? I, am re I really enjoyed the ride of this Endorphin Speed. Uh, so coming in at $160, here we go, 7.4 ounces, 100% a tweener shoe in the running shoe rotation. Tempo day, threshold day. Uh, middle distance day, long run shoe, race day shoe. Absolutely, 100%, uh, half marathon, 
um, marathon, potentially marathon, more, I'm gonna say half marathon, I'm even gonna say crazy enough, 10k on the roads like that now if it was a little lighter that would be amazing like if it was like 7.1 ounces in my size or seven ounces absolutely epic but i'm telling you this guy is the value shoe of 2020 from Saucony. Now, $160, and that's, that's not cheap. They're not giving it away. But I 100% think that this shoe can knock out so many different tasks within your training plan. And it's just lively. It's peppy. It's got snap uh, through that foot strike. I love, love, love the Saucony Endorphin Speed. And we shall see what happens in 2021 with this shoe. I don't know how they're going to make it better, but I'm sure they will. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Great upper, great breathability, uh, very comfortable tongue, not too plush. Uh, in fact, I think they could lose this overlay here through the heel counter. Pretty stiff heel counter here. And I think they could uh, just to drop the weight of the shoe. Anyway, endorphin shift, uh, sorry, endorphin speed is my value shoe of 2020 from Saucony. And last but not least, let me dig it out here. The Endorphin Pro. There it is up there on the shelf. Carbon fiber plate shoe coming in at $200. 6.7 ounces in my size. So not quite an ounce lighter than the Endorphin Speed, but approaching an ounce lighter. I can feel it in my hands. It's definitely lighter, 100% but it is $40 more than the Endorphin Speed. So that's why I went with the Speed with respect to value. And a leaner, a little bit of leaner feel through that midsole, that is why I'm not putting the shoe into the long run or even frankly middle distance run category. It is a marathon racing shoe, 100%. Half marathon, yes as well. I'd probably lean toward a couple other options like the Asics Meta Racer for a half marathon shoe, uh, something lighter. And uh, But overall, very pleased with the shoe. Yes, did I already mention car? Oh my goodness. It's quite a bit different, everybody. That is a lot more rigid, that carbon fiber plate inside the midsole. Um, a lighter, a lighter upper. Uh, I'm gonna say a little bit more breathable, but not that much more breathable than the Endorphin Speed. Uh, the, uh, the lockdown was fine. Let me do the, oh yeah, wow, interesting. I, I had kind of forgotten that heel counter is not nearly as rigid as in the, or stout, I should say, as in the endorphin speed. You can see it there. Uh, what else? I'm pleased with the shoe overall. I think I mentioned in the full review. Also, did I also mention that? All of these shoes, full reviews are listed down below in the description, okay? Uh, first impressions and or full reviews down in the description. And yeah, so I think I, I think they could lose a little bit of the outsole rubber just a little bit on the Endorphin Pro. Please though, and we shall see where Saucony goes with this lineup in 2021. I think it's, I think it, I think they're only going to improve this shoe moving forward. And there you have it, everyone. That went pretty quick. I think we did six shoes. Again, I'm going to keep getting better and better at running in more shoes from companies in one calendar year so that I can give you a more comprehensive analysis of the entire lineup. I hope that helped. All right. Hopefully you didn't get too confused by all those. Uh, but again, it's pairing a shoe with the task in your training plan and be patient, take your time building out the rotation. And on that note, if you do want to pick up these shoes, they are available down below from Running Warehouse. All right, that helps support the channel, helps me buy the shoes and make these vlogs for you. Uh, so they're listed down below. Question of the day, what has been your favorite tweener shoe in the last 12 months? Meaning a shoe that accomplishes a lot of different tasks within your training plan. Your favorite tweener shoe. A new, term new terminology here in the studio today. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. Saucony uh, Running Shoe Rotation 2020 in the books. And of course, we will toss it to the Saucony running shoe playlist right there, right there, right there. Saucony running shoe playlist right there. Also, let me know if you enjoy this type of vlog. Does it help in the comments? I would appreciate it. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.